All right, now, so if you ever need reference code for any given lecture, just go to github.com slash coding for entrepreneurs slash e-commerce. And it will, if you scroll down to the readme, the lecture title will be here inside of here. So they'll like, if you actually click on it, it will take you to the code that relates to that specific lecture. Um, and there will be changes here and there uh, that might happen to some of this code, uh, but it's not likely. W what you'll see in the video will be what's uploaded here. Uh, but to get the most recent version of the code, so the most complete version of, at whatever point in time, uh, will be on the regular Coding for Entrepreneurs slash e-commerce. Um, so again, each lecture will have links here and that is how you'll be able to do that. One thing you'll notice is we have this requirements.txt. So if we go into our terminal and close out our server, if I do pip freeze, I see everything that's installed. And then if I do pip freeze is greater than requirements.txt, uh, it will actually copy everything in pip freeze to a file called requirements.txt. Um, and I did that in the root of the virtual environment. That's why you see it. Uh, on um, coding for entrepreneurs right there. So if I change back into e-commerce and start the server again, go into Chrome, do a refresh, we see that our template's working fine. And if we go into Sublime Text in our view, we have our template loaded right there and our template here. All right, so now I'm actually gonna add a new template setting uh, right down below, right next to static URL, I'm gonna do template dirs, so template directories. And we're gonna do it relative to the project itself. So just like what we have with um, this right here, this name of our database, we are gonna copy that whole thing, bring it down to template dirs, make sure there's a comma at the end of it. And we're gonna change this to templates. So this is now going to be a folder called templates because it doesn't have an extension um, and it's just a folder and also it's called template dirs so that the um, way it's actually set up means template directories. So just like db.sqlite3, we need to put templates where SQLite3 is. So if I close down e-commerce configuration folder and products, I see db.sqlite3 and manage.py. So this is the root of the project. So I can just make a new folder in here, new folder, and I'm gonna call it templates. And that new folder is actually where I'm going to store all of my templates. So let's keep home and templates inside of products. I'm gonna keep that in there for now. And I'm gonna make a new file in here. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna call it base.html. All right, so inside of ba and templates, base.html. And now I'm gonna just say h1 base.html. Okay. And we'll close that tag off. All right, so now that we have this, in our views, let's change this template to base.html. And I'm gonna change ABC back to home. And then in my URLs, change ABC back to home as well. All right, so now we go into Chrome and do a refresh. Ah, now it says base.html. So let's actually change the um, what the view, so base two, so we can see all of the places it's looking. So if I do a refresh, save it, make sure I do a refresh here. Might have to restart the server even. So let's cancel and rerun the server. Uh, sometimes you'll see this happen and it just means that the port is still there and it ignored your cancel. So let's just run it again and that, that time it actually worked. So run server. So all I did was, if it says the port is in use, there's another way to kill the port, but uh, I just refreshed it. And and um, then, it, then it said this after I refreshed it, and then I tried to cancel it again, and then that time it actually canceled it again. All right, so now I'm running the server. And um, what we see here is template does not exist at base two. And then if we scroll down a little bit, we see where it's actually looking. So it's looking in desktop e-commerce, e-commerce templates for base two. And then it's also looking here, here, and then products, templates, base two. So it doesn't find it anywhere. And the first place it looks is the file system, which is which means what we just set up, which is the folder here. 
right? So that's where it's looking. And that's that. All right, so now you should have a better understanding of where you can store templates. From here on out, I am going to store our templates inside of this template folder, not inside of the app folders. I'm actually not going to use this file in here anymore. Um, so I'm gonna leave it for a couple lectures and then I'll actually remove it completely and just only use templates. Okay, so now I wanna just briefly discuss context and how context works. We will get into it a lot more as we go, but context is actually a pretty cool topic. So what this does, if we set a Python dictionary here and we say like user name is, and then I'll just say Justin. All right, so I just made a variable called username is, and I set it to a string called Justin. So it's the key and the value, right? And in this base, I can actually use this context. So if I open up base.html and I use these brackets, two curly brackets, and I say user name is, and again, we see it's exactly this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that, paste it up here, and change this to saying hello. And then it says hello, username is, and then if I do a refresh in here, it says hello, Justin. And if I change this to ABC, S, whatever, uh, and make sure you save it, and again, sometimes you'll have to reset the server. Um, it's still not complete, like it's still doing it, it's keeping the server going. Um, it's just a little, little bit of a lag, that's all. And then I see hello, ABCS. Cool, so that's how the context works. Now, if I removed everything from context um, and did a refresh, restart the server, not sure why it keeps doing this, but um, restart the server, run the server again and refresh, and now that context goes away because uh, I actually kept it out of there. Now, if I kept locals, like we saw before, I could say, I could set a variable username is, and then Justin using locals. If I set that, and then I would see, okay, hello, Justin using locals, right? So that's what locals allows you to do. It's not recommended to use locals. It's much more recommended by developers to use actual dictionaries for the context. So if you wanted to do the variable set like that, you would do username is, and then just set it just like that using the context dictionary. And we refresh in here, it's still saying that now using context. And we refresh, uh, cancel the server. And there we go. So that is how you use context with the templates. There's a lot more stuff that we'll do with context, but it's a good idea to just kind of know um, something about it. Um, now, one thing we could kind of already jump into is do if is authenticated, we are gonna say that the context is this. I'm just gonna leave the template down here. And then if they're not used in authenticated, we'll say else. We'll say the context username is unknown. All right, so this is a built-in function for the user model to see if it's authenticated and request.user is looking for a specific user. So let's go ahead and refresh. And it says hello unknown, because I don't, I'm not actually logged in. So if I go to the admin and I log in, with my username and my easy little password. And then I go back to that home page. Ah, look at that. So that's how powerful context can be. And you can also just say username is request.username. Request.user, sorry, request.user. And even either way you can use request.user. And then we can refresh. Oh, let's spell request correctly. and then refresh, possibly restart the server. Refresh, okay, so now it says hello and it says my username. If I do admin and log out, 
it's going to say, hello anonymous user. So it doesn't actually have a user, right? And you can also do email and all this other stuff too that's associated to that user. Uh, but for now, that's the basics of templates and context. So there's all types of things that we can use for template or for context. We can use lists, we can use dictionaries, like we can put a dictionary within the context dictionary. Uh, we can put a list in here, we can put a, a model, we can do all types of things and we will learn more about that later. But it's just kind of a good idea to know that, hey, I can be smarter about how I actually have my HTML working um, depending on who is logged in or what type of person they are, like if they're, if they're authenticated or not, or if they have a certain type of name or something like, you know, however you want it to be, you can use these templates to be really smart. Now, if you're working with a designer of any kind of oh, front end designer, so somebody who's doing all the web design, so the graphics and the way it looks, if you're working with someone like that, you could kind of walk them through it on how to actually replace certain things for uh, using context in the templates. Or what you could do is give them some of this code and say, hey, wherever this is, it's gonna be replaced by something else. So make sure that you keep it in there. Or even you might be able to jump in and change it where you would just tell them, hey, I just, hello, some variable here that I'm gonna replace. So um, just keep that in mind when you're working. Uh, with a designer or you could be designing it yourself and that's actually what we'll be doing in this class so yeah let's uh let's continue on and uh, in the next one we'll actually implement bootstrap.com into our project so see you then